Hi, welcome to this new video. In this video I want to go through the uh, Wi-Fi 7 standard. Um, so you might have seen this recently in some of the news because uh, MediaTek and another company have been uh, advertising that they will be perhaps um, demoing some new technology that will include the new Wi-Fi 7 standard uh, at CES uh, 2022, so for next year. Um, so as it uh, normally takes place in January time, um, so we haven't got long to wait until it gets demoed. So I just wanted to go through what the standards are and uh, also as probably if you're uh, subscribed, um, you would have seen the community tab. Um, I think like me, um, I haven't got any Wi-Fi 6E um, uh, clients yet. And um, so this new Wi-Fi 7 standard, if this is due to come out, uh, next year then uh, is it worth waiting uh, for the Wi-Fi 7 standard or should you just go and get Wi-Fi 6e uh, router because they're still fairly expensive um, and also there's there is a handful of devices and it's growing a bit more popular now but again um, is it worth uh, just waiting perhaps um, another amount of time a uh, short time to actually wait until Wi-Fi 7 standard comes out. So as you can see here on the actual page, so this is the actual Wi-Fi Alliance. So these are the uh, group that actually uh, set the standards. So as you can see here, you've got the generational names here. So uh, back uh, when we used to have 802.11n and 802.11ac, uh, so as you can see, they changed their names uh, several years ago so to make it much more um, less complicated for people to understand so you still have the technology actually um, the actual uh, designation there on the side so you can see you've got Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6 and 7 so Wi-Fi 4 represents 802.11n we have Wi-Fi 5 uh, that's 802.11ac uh, Wi-Fi 6 and then you have 802.11ax and then Wi-Fi 7 is the new standard and that's 802.11be and of course that's still in development. So as we knew um, with Wi-Fi 6, um, as we know there the 802.11ax, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi 6e actually includes um, an upgrade to the Wi-Fi 6 and that includes the 6 gigahertz band. So what makes that special is it opens up a lot more bandwidth and um, for people and it includes some new technologies for the uplink and downlink as well. Um, so it adds up a new spectrum opened up so it's less interference. But again, the problem with having higher uh, bands is uh, the 6 gigahertz might give you more bandwidth, but the distance is not as far. So I still predict that probably, uh, you know, Wi-Fi uh, 4, 802.11n will probably still be around for several years, uh, if not more, uh, still on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency because it actually does go further still. Um, and gradually devices will start moving up um, as technology uh, moves on and everything else. But just remember that the higher the bandwidth, uh, the gigahertz of the frequency, the less uh, is the distance it can go through. So as you can see down here as well as the icons that they uh, for the simple interfaces. So you might see these on your phones and things like that where you have Wi-Fi 4, 5 and 6. And that's just the sample user interface for the visual so people can easily understand. Um, so it's a good I think it's really good that they actually did change the names in the end uh, from the 802.11nacaxbe to Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6 and 7. It just makes much more sense. So if we just move on now then to continue into, as we were talking about Wi-Fi 6E, um, I just was interested to see what how it is actually getting on. So from April 2021, it was roughly when it actually came out. Um, and you can see here um, the countries that are actually adopting it or considering or, uh, or have adopted the actual technology. So you can still see, you know, major major Western countries have adopted it um, and are considering it. So you can see here from the graph, and you, you can, I'll put a link in the actual uh, description as well, so you can see if your country has is on the list, but there is several. Um, there's a zoomed in picture here, as you can see here. 
So you can see several countries have actually adopted it now. Um, there is a difference in slightly within the frequencies and what uh, they've adopted. Of course, uh, large parts of uh, Asia and things like that, I presume they probably have adapted uh, to uh, Wi-Fi 6E, but perhaps don't report it and things like that. So as you can see here, most countries now have adopted the frequency for the uh, Wi-Fi 6E. Um, so that's all good news for us as well. So moving on to Wi-Fi 7. So as I said, you might have seen this in the news lately. So they were saying about the uh, Wi-Fi 7 uh, technology is the new future and then how it's going to be uh, coming out. So one of the companies, MediaTek, who make the chips for uh, Wi-Fi uh, devices, um, they're actually uh, Wi-Fi 7. So they did a presentation, I think, of about in October time um, so as you can see here I'll put again I'll put reference links to here so the actual uh, differences as you can see is that the biggest changes will include include a two-fold increase in bandwidth uh, and an increase in the number of streams as well so looking at the standards so of course these are not confirmed yet these are probably just draft numbers but up to 40 gigabits per second so they are some crazy speeds but again, you take everything with a pinch of salt. So like with some of the frequencies um, and speeds we've seen on some of the routers now for Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, you know where you don't get anywhere near what the claimed uh, rate is. Um, and, you know, to get optimal, you have to stand probably only a few feet away with no interference as well. So, of course, it will help and everything else. So as they've said here, uh, and we've seen before about the generational name, um, so they were saying around the working group began developing this uh, around the 7 gigahertz frequency now. So it has been going on for a, a few years now the, about Wi-Fi 7. So the other things they're bringing on is the uh, 320 megahertz channels. So that's the sub frequencies that are going to be adding and they'll be adding 4K QAM and then uh, OF uh, DMA. So these are all different multi-link technology enhancements. So basically what these are do is that it can multitask much better and it can hold much data and it can beam form much better as well to devices. Um, so giving you a better signal and better throughput for your upload and download and it can handle multiple devices much better. And I think that's probably most benefit for people as now it seems like everything from even from your Hoover to your fridge um, is on Wi-Fi. So the amount of devices is going to multiply um, uh, considerably in the years to come. So you can see here we're talking about the uh, 320 megahertz channel. So Wi-Fi 7 will double the bandwidth of the uh, current 6E. Wi-Fi 6E at 6 gigahertz frequencies with multiple channels are available. So far, it's known that the 320 megahertz channels will be used um, and then they'll use 260 megahertz together um, and then you adjust. So it's just like with um, 11AC or uh, as we say Wi-Fi 5, uh, you've got the 80 megahertz channel there that you can choose. And it's the same with the uh, Wi-Fi on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency as well. Um, you'll see that sometimes you'll have the 20 and then you have the choice of 40 megahertz there. So of course the megahertz is the bigger the number, the more bandwidth you get. Um, but again, there's more interference and, and uh, less distance. So as I've spoken before about Qualm, uh, there's not many routers that actually have 4K. Um, I think I do believe there's a, a um, Xiaomi uh, router that actually already has 4K Qualm already. Um, and that one came out, um, I think, at the beginning of this year, um, and it was advertised as having Wi-Fi uh, 6E before any of the other routers had, but it turned out it wasn't actually the official Wi-Fi 6E uh, standard. It was uh, Wi-Fi 6E enhanced, and then enhanced was, was they were using the um, this here with uh, Qualm. So as it says here, um, with the throughput as well so that's a, a gain of signal to uh, noise ratio so again in other words to have a good signal transmission on Wi-Fi 7 
it will be necessary to use Wi-Fi access points and routers very close to the clients. So it's like your 5G on your mobile phone. You'll notice that you know to get a good signal, you'll have multiple. You need more of the aerials around you to actually uh, get a better signal. So again, it, it takes you with a pinch of salt on how these are going to actually happen. And of course, this is still draft. It does go into much more detail about the downlink and uplink data as well for the uh, OFDMA um, standard that's going to be coming out as well. I won't go into too much detail because I'll let you read that up and I don't want to bore you. Um, you probably just want to find out uh, what's new. And of course the uh, multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So um, basically with uh, Wi-Fi 7 uh, there will be a total of 16 um, and that's basically doubling the throughput of multiple clients inputting and outputting at the same time so your router can multitask um, basically double the throughput uh, so it's saying around as well as uh, Qualcomm is ready developing the chips so it was reported that uh, Qualcomm, Broadcom and MediaTek as we already mentioned are already developing chips with a new standard for Wi-Fi 7 um, and of course these will double the network speeds uh, compared to Wi-Fi 6 so I think that's the takeaway is that yes, there's going to be double the speeds, but we've seen that quite good uh, throughput um, through the generations of Wi-Fi. But again, have they actually delivered on their massive speeds that they've said? Not really. Um, so again, I'd like to see the standard come out um, and then we can test it to see everything. So as we said that this hopefully will come out, um, they'll demo some products from these companies. Um, in CES 2022 and if they do any new routers come out I will uh, make a video and let you know so again this is the company that actually um, said they're going to do a reveal of Wi-Fi 7 at CES that's MediaTek um, so again uh, they're basically saying here in the article um, about the new signal and everything else and the technology that they're going to be adding but again um, this will probably be quite a few months away. Um, so even though they're going to present it in CES uh, next in January next year, um, and they're saying about the low latency, the better interference migration. Um, so basically it can have less interference and it's about 2.4 times speed they're saying here. Um, so and they're saying that MediaTek, this is the company that do the chips, is one of the first adopters of this technology. So it'd be good to see what new routers will come out. So I would advise if you really do want the latest technology um, and you're like me on a budget, um, it's probably best just to wait until uh, January to see what does come out and if there is anything going to be official with release dates instead of getting Wi-Fi 6 router, just hold off just for a month um, and then see when the deadline will be for when they're releasing it. If it is going to be until... 2023 of course you most people can't wait that long um, and of course you want to upgrade then there's no point waiting as I said there's there's, there's a ha only a handful of devices that are Wi-Fi 6e right now so uh, having Wi-Fi 7 um, you might as well wait um, but again the adopt the technology will take a quite a long time and especially with uh, the current situation with chip manufacturing and manufacturing in as a whole um, there seems to be distribution problems and everything else so it will probably take some time and lastly um, again this is just another article I'll put these from Android Central uh, saying about the uh, new Wi-Fi standard and it was uh, James um, that for MediaTek and he was about his product uh, marketing about the new Wi-Fi 7 and uh, some of the new technologies that are going to hopefully come out so this has been a quick video just to go through the uh, new Wi-Fi 7 standard um, that you've seen here. Um, as you can see that sometimes I'll put some of the graphics onto the uh, screen so you can have a look um, as we go through. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful. As usual, leave any comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Have a great day and Happy New Year.